Amazon ECS Fargate is the easiest way to get a full-blown and production-ready .NET Web API up and running. In this video, we'll deploy a .NET 8 Web API that's integrated with DynamoDB and spin up an instance on the AWS cloud. We'll discuss about the core concepts of ECS Fargate like clusters, services, tasks, port mappings and other related configuration. We'll also be containerizing our .NET application and pushing the image from local to Amazon Elastic Container Registry or ECR. Hey everyone, this is Mukesh from CoreWithMukesh.com and in this video, we'll be covering all the fundamentals around ECS Fargate and how you can simplify your .NET deployments. We'll be deploying a simple .NET 8 CRUD application that's integrated with the DynamoDB table. Thanks to AWS for sponsoring this video, which is a part of my ongoing .NET on AWS series for which I have already posted a couple of videos and articles both on my YouTube channel as well as on my blog. I will leave the links below in the description in case you want to follow along with the series. Let's get started. So here are the prerequisites you are expected to have to follow this video tutorial. An AWS account, authenticated development machine, .NET 8 SDK installed, Visual Studio IDE and Docker desktop. Amazon ECS or Elastic Container Service is an AWS managed service that allows you to run and manage Docker containers at scale. ECS simplifies the deployment and management of containerized applications by abstracting the underlying infrastructure. It integrates with Docker to orchestrate container clusters without requiring any users to manage the container runtime directly. Now there are two primary ways to run containerized applications on ECS. One is AWS Fargate and the other is EC2 instances. AWS Fargate is a serverless compute engine where AWS manages the infrastructure for you. You don't need to provision or manage servers. With Fargate, you simply define the container specifications and AWS handles the rest. Whereas with EC2 instances, which is a self-managed option, you get to run your containers on your own EC2 instances. You have full control over the underlying infrastructure, allowing for more customization, but you are responsible for provisioning, scaling and managing these instances. For this demonstration, we'll go with Fargate as it's the most preferred choice of deployment. Amazon ECS has several core components that work together to run a containerized application. First, we have clusters, which is a group of resources that can run your containers. Clusters can be backed by either EC2 instances or Fargate, depending on how much control you want over your infrastructure. As mentioned earlier, for this demonstration, we'll be completely relying on Fargate. Next is the task definition. This is like the blueprint for your container. It includes everything needed to run a container such as the Docker image URL, CPU, configuration, memory and environment variables. Services ensure that the correct number of tasks are always running. They can automatically restart tasks if they fail and even handle load balancing between them. Finally, tasks. So these are the actual running instances of your task definition. They can run standalone or be managed by a service for better scalability and resilience. These components work together to manage, deploy and scale containerized applications in ECS. The workflow in Amazon ECS Fargate is quite simple and serverless. First, you create a task definition which is a blueprint of your container. So this includes the Docker image, CPU, memory and other configuration. Next, you define a service. The service ensures that a specific number of tasks are always running, handles scaling and integrates with the load balancer if needed. Fargate automatically provisions the infrastructure. You don't need to manage or configure EC2 instances. AWS handles the compute resources for you. When you deploy, Fargate starts the task based on your task definition. These tasks run as an isolated container with the required CPU and memory. And all the networking, security and scaling are managed behind the scenes, allowing you to focus more on the application. Now the core idea behind ECS is that every ECS cluster would have n task definitions where each task definition can have multiple Docker containers associated with it depending on your application deployment approach. Now, once a task definition is created, a service can be created based on this task definition. In our case, we would create a cluster and a single task definition which would have the specifications of our .NET application. Now, this task definition will be responsible for pulling the .NET application image from ECR. So I haven't mentioned this before, but we will be building the Docker image of our .NET application, the local and pushing to the ECR. Let's also try to understand the difference between ECS Fargate and self-managed containers. You can think of Fargate as a fully managed service where AWS takes care of all the underlying infrastructure. You don't have to worry about managing the servers, scaling them or dealing with any operational overhead. You just define the resources your containers need 
and Fargate handles the rest, making it simpler and easier to manage and also allowing you to focus more on the application code itself. On the other hand, with self-managed ECS, you are completely responsible for managing the EC2 instances that your containers run on. You have to provision, scale and maintain the infrastructure yourself, which gives you a lot more control but also requires more effort and expertise. It's often more cost effective at large scale, but comes with an additional operational complexity and might require you to have a larger DevOps team. So now that we have understood the concepts around ECS, let me show you the .NET 8 web API that I have built for this demonstration. So this is a simple .NET 8 web API that's integrated with DynamoDB for CRUD operations. We have the books model here, which has the title, summary, published year, and the number of pages. Also in the program.cs, we have three major endpoints that returns a list of book gets a book by ID and creates a new book. You can find the source code attached to the description of this video. Also, here is a books table on DynamoDB with the partition key set as ID. And here is a swagger definition where I can request for all the saved books. So I go to the get endpoint, click on try it out and execute. As you can see, I can get a list of books that is saved on my DynamoDB table. The next step is to build a Docker image of this application. For this, we'll have to add a Docker file. For now, the easiest way is to simply navigate to Visual Studio, right click on the project, click on add and hit on docker support. Here let's select target OS as Linux and keep the container build type as docker file. Click on OK. This should be generating you a docker file. So this is all we need. Next we'll have to create a repository on AWS ECR. So let me open back the browser, switch to AWS management console and search for ECR. Let's open it up. Create a new repository. I will name it as books. I will leave everything as the default and click on create. Let me open up the books repository. So now we have generated a Docker file and we also have a place to push the Docker image. You can use this view push commands to get a list of commands that will help you to push the Docker image directly from your local to the ECR repository. So now that we have the Docker file, Amazon ECR repository and the commands required to build and publish the image to ECR. Make sure that you have Docker desktop running. Next, you will have to open up a CLI terminal at the root of the application or wherever the Docker file exists. I'll open mine here. I'll go back to the commands and copy the first one. So the first one basically retrieves an authentication token to authenticate your Docker desktop to be able to publish image to the registry. So let me copy it and go back to the terminal, paste it here. This will ensure that I am authenticated to push the image. The next step will be to build the image. So let's go back and run the simple docker build command. I'll copy this command, go back to the terminal and hit enter. As you see, the image is already built. To verify this, go back to docker desktop and click on images. We have the docker image for books here, which is about 200 MB. Now let's go back and tag the image. Let me open up the terminal again and click on enter. So once that is tagged, the only operation that is left is to push the actual image to ECR. Let me copy the last command. As you can see, we have already started pushing the image to our ECR repository. Once the images are pushed, let's close up these commands and let's refresh this page. As you can see, the latest image is already available here. So here, if you see, we have the image URL. This is the image URI that we'll need when we'll be defining the task definition of our ECS containers. So now that we have our ECR image ready, let's navigate to ECS and start creating a cluster. I'll open Elastic Container Service on a new tab. Click on Create Cluster. I'll name my cluster as Books. And here, as you can see, we are going to select the AWS Fargate serverless mode. You can also select Amazon EC2 instance if you need. I'll keep everything else to the default and click on create. Now cluster creation is going to take a couple of moments. So let me navigate to task definitions and create a new task definition. Click on create new task definition. I'll name it as books. I'll select it as AWS Fargate. And for the operating system, we'll be selecting Linux based machines and the task size being 1V CPU and 3GB memory. Feel free to adjust it according to your requirement. For the task role, 
I'll select the default task role and I'll name my container as books API. I'll go back to ECR, copy the image URL, paste it over here, mark it as an essential container and also make sure to change the container port as 8080 because starting from .NET 8, the default container ports have been 8080. I'll leave everything as the default. You can also limit your CPU and the memory as per your requirement. In order to access the Swagger URL, you'll have to define a specific environment variable, which will be ASP.NET Core environment. The value will be development. I'll keep everything else to the default and make sure the log collection is enabled. We'll skip everything else and click on create. As you can see, both the cluster and the task definition has been created successfully. Let's navigate back to the clusters, open up our cluster. As you can see, we have both services and task. So what are the differences between services and task? Both the services and task are based on the task definition that we created earlier. When you need just a single instance of your application, we'll go for tasks. But if you need multiple instances of your application behind a load balancer, we'll go for services. In this demonstration, let's create a service. I'll click on create. I'll leave everything else to the default. Select services and select the family as books, the revision as the latest, and I'll name my service as book service. I'll set the decide task count to two, which means that ECS will always ensure that two instances of your application is always running. Also in the networking tab, make sure you are selecting the default security group. Since you have selected services, it's essential to configure the load balancing. I'll set the load balancing to application load balancer. I'll create a new load balancer and keep everything as the default and hit on create. Now the service deployment is going to take a couple of minutes. To see what's happening, let's go to CloudFormation. Here, click on resources. As you can see, with this deployment, we'll be having target group, load balancers, listeners, and EC services. So I will be back once all of these resources are provisioned. The CloudFormation stack deployment has been completed. As you can see here, we have the target group, load balancer, listener, and ECS services deployment completed. Let me close up this tab and go back to clusters. The book services has been deployed successfully. Let me go to services and you can see that we have two tasks running. Let's open up services and click on tasks. You can see that we have two instances of the application running. Now to access the URL, let's go to configuration and network. Here, if you scroll down, you can see the DNS name. So this is the publicly available DNS that is created by the load balancer for us. Let me open up the address and you can see that we have the welcome message available. Now to view the swagger URL, let's navigate to slash swagger. And let me zoom this out a bit. Now we have all the endpoints that we mentioned earlier in the .NET code. Now to get the list of books from the DynamoDB table, let me click on slash books, try it out and execute the endpoint. As you can see, we have a list of all the books directly from the DynamoDB table. Now, let's also try to create a new book. Let me click on post slash books. And let me type in test 2024. Pages 12. And test. As you can see, the book has been created with the following ID. I'll just copy this ID and use the get endpoint to verify if the creation has been successful. And there you go. Here is the book that we created just now. Do you remember that we have also wired up CloudWatch logs to this container? Let's go back to the cluster, open up CloudWatch, select log groups, and navigate to ECS slash books. So this is where all the logs from the container will be written to. Let me click on search log groups. And here are all the logs directly coming from the container. So this is going to help you big time with debugging the application. This is how simple it is to deploy an entire .NET application to the cloud, ensuring that it is scalable and highly available. I personally use ECS for my personal projects as well as at work to deploy .NET applications. That's it for this demonstration. Make sure that you always clean up the clusters and resources once you tested out AWS services. So this helps you to keep your builds under control. So to clean this up, let me navigate to services. I'll select the service 
and delete service. I'll force delete it. Click on delete. Now go back to clusters, select the cluster and delete the cluster. I have already started a .NET Zero to Hero series on my blog and soon will be releasing videos around it as well. So if you're interested, do subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified whenever I post new content on .NET. You can go through this article for the text version of this video and here is the GitHub repository. All of these links will be available in the description of the video. I hope you have liked this video. In the next video, we'll discuss yet another exciting AWS service, SNS, and how it can be used to build event-driven systems. Thanks for the time and have a great day ahead.